Hello guys, this is Anna. I'm not a professional vlogger, but I'm a person who believes that the world needs to know more about real life situation in Ukraine. And I would like to start my today's vlog with a big thank you to all of you for your support, for your questions and for your attention. Uh, it is very important for us in Ukraine to see that you follow the updates on the situation. Uh, because when hundreds of people die and bombs continue to fall on our buildings, it's very important to understand that you're still with us and you understand all the crimes you see, all the crimes that Russia does on our territory. We will definitely win, not only because the truth is on our side, but because our armed forces are strong and our allies are strong, but also because you watch, you support and you speak about the situation in Ukraine. Also, I'm very grateful for your questions because they, there are lots of things that I understand I want to tell you. And uh, Ukraine was not in the center of the global attention. To some extent, it is our fault. Uh, to some extent, it is the heritage of uh, the Soviet Union past and the Iron Curtain that divided many Southern European and Central European states from the rest of the world. It was not our choice. And you see that we have to fight for that choice to be visible, to be democratic. Of course, I know my country is not ideal. And many of you ask about problems in the government, corruption and so on. We all have that, but many other countries have that. We've tried to change lots of things. Our uh, society, civil society is quite active and you see that uh, on Maidans and revolutions. And uh, but uh, when you look uh, on contrast to what is going on in Russia, for example, today again on news, and these are not Ukrainian news, so it's not propaganda. 71% of Russians support Putin and uh, his war in Ukraine. So what else can I say? Uh, your questions and uh, I like answering them. And one that I have got from Australia was that uh, many foreigners believe that or believed that Ukraine and Russia are brothers or a brother and a sister, because in my language, Ukraine is she. Uh, well, I believe that after this war, uh, all the world will understand that we are not brothers because like brothers never treat their brothers this way. And perhaps this is the myth that was um, very much disseminated by Soviet propaganda, that Russia is a very strong central country and lots of minor, weaker siblings that need, uh, that need its control, like Ukraine, Baltic countries, Belarus, that is now occupied by Russia from my perspective. So there are lots of things that prove we are not brothers. Moreover, Russia tries to steal much of our history. Well, <clears throat> first of all, even before the war started, lots of Ukrainians worked hard to explain what is Ukraine, where is Ukraine, and Ukraine is not a part of Russia. That was a very popular explanation. When you say, I'm from Ukraine, people, well, that's Russia? No, that's totally not Russia. And also we fought against Russian spelling and pronunciation in the airports. For example, it is Kyiv, not Kyiv. Kyiv is Russian pronunciation. And there are lots of other examples. But these are just on the top of the cultural iceberg. Because uh, maybe you have heard that uh, the history of the Kyiv Rus. Kyiv Rus was a very strong, popular and important state in the medieval Europe and uh, Ukraine is um, a descendant of this state because the center of it was in Kyiv. Christianity came to uh, Ukraine and Russia and other countries from Ukraine, from Kyiv, and they tried to steal our historical figures, our popular uh, kings, princes, dukes, and to make them Russian. Uh, very often we um, try to oppose that, but Ukraine's voice was not that strong in this media uh, sector. We did not have that many English speaking channels as Russia did. And uh, for many people, there was an equality sign between Ukraine and Russia. Ukraine actually is the largest star, uh, state in Europe. Uh, and its capital is Kyiv that was founded like 500, well, like 500 years 
before I'm sorry, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm very bad with the date, so I'm, I won't refilm this video because I promised myself not to refilm. But I mean, like uh, when Christianity came to Kiev, uh, Moscow did not exist. And uh, now we have lots of these memes like Kiev uh, has lots of historical buildings, streets, and still just a swamp on the territory of Moscow. Moscow was just one of the kingdoms that later was a part of Kiev Rus, but then they have fell under the armies of Ords and they were influenced by Tatar Mongolian Ords. And somewhere in uh, the end of the 13th, in the beginning of the 14th century, our problems uh, started. And with the growth of Russian Empire, uh, with the Soviet Union, there were lots of troubles that we had to oppose. And many Ukrainians, like the majority of Ukrainians, did not want to be a part of the Soviet Union. And in our modern history, we say that we were occupied, just like Poland, just like Baltic countries. And uh, during the Soviet Union, lots of Ukrainian intellectuals, writers, uh, were killed. You know that we had three famines, very serious famines, during which millions of Ukrainians died. And uh, millions of Ukrainians lost their uh, property. And it was a true tragedy because Ukrainians are very different from Russian, I mean, on the level of mentality. And you can see that in their jokes, in their attitudes. For example, today in Ukrainian armed forces, we have lots of women. Uh, not all of them fight, some of them do other jobs, but also some of them are commanders of tanks or other things. And it is totally impossible in um, Russia. Then our people, our mothers uh, are very much involved in what is going on. And when we hear Russian soldiers speaking with their mothers, telling them, describing them the situation in Ukraine, it's totally different, totally different connections. And uh, Ukrainians are uh, very much about <clears throat> building, growing, developing, and Russians are destroying stealing and uh, building this totalitarian uh, state. Uh, you know, when I look at uh, the television of modern Russia, I'm surprised how millions of people agree to listen to that, agree to have their internet closed and so on. The problem of Russia is that they manipulate and they steal. And for example, with our history, when they steal our history, they forget that you can substitute history facts in your manuals, but you cannot substitute the qualities that you have in people. And that is the reason why they will fail in this war. <clears throat> you know that at the beginning of their aggression, they believed they will take over Ukraine in just three days. But here we are, almost a month of uh, this war, and they are definitely not winning. They are in total global isolation and Ukrainian nation is united as never before. Why? Because they had created this image of Ukraine as a weaker brother, uh, a country without its own culture, language and nation. And they were manipulating these facts on their TV and perhaps they started to believe their own propaganda. But it's not like that. We are a big state. We are a large country with a very interesting history. Uh, we uh, have our culture, we have our language, we share democratic values and even though we have lots of problems, we are normal and I'm very happy that the whole world sees now that Ukraine is definitely not a brother, not a sister, not a relative at all to this disgusting Russian state. And I cannot be tolerant to Russians as long as they bomb my cities. Thank you very much for your questions. Uh, thank you for your support. And please leave your comments. I will be eager to answer and explain anything you're interested in. Slava Ukraini!